What is up guys, that's it here. So Wildstar is finally out. We're all scrambling to get in game, dig into the Nexus and see what Carbine have in store for us. So you're probably wondering what class you're gonna play, what paths are you going to pick, but before any of that there is a single most important choice in any MMO and that is how is your character going to look? Because if you're gonna stare at him for the next couple of hundred hours, you might as well enjoy it. Let's see what the character customization of Wildstar has to offer us. We'll go through every race option, both from the Exiles and the Dominion factions, so you can get a good feel for the looks, and I'll give you a brief overview of the style and flair of each race. Both the Exiles and the Dominion have a human option, the Exiled Human and the Cassian respectively. I know a lot of players like to have the traditional Homo Sapiens as an option, be it to have an avatar of themselves in the fantastic world or simply have a familiar and grounded option in a universe of whimsical things. Both the exiled humans and the Cassians share the same variety of skin and hair color options, but they do have distinct facial features and unique hair and facial hairstyles, so even if you have a human of both factions, they will still have their own recognizable traits. The Orin are the first unique race option in the Exile ranks. They definitely fill the cute race niche with their light features, fairy appearance and animal-like ears. If you're a fan of anime-sized eyes, fluffy but not completely animalistic characters that still have a lot of humanoid traits in them, then the Orin are the race for you. The Orin are the closest that Wildstar has to the traditional fantasy elf, of course the Mordesh have a pinch of the elven looks, but they have a more grim and serious feel to them. So if the traditional wild fairy feel is more to your liking, the Orin would be a prime choice. The Granok are the big, burly archetype of the Wildstar universe. They have by far the most warrior-like and imposing body frames of all races. They are rivaled in height by the Makari, but as far as pure muscle mass is concerned, the Granok are by far the winners. As the name would suggest, they seem to be carved out of granite and stone, sporting minerals instead of beards, or moss instead of hair. If the Thing is your favorite Fantastic Four character, and you're a fan of the powerful feel of races like the Torn from World of Warcraft, and especially the Baraka from Terra Online, the Granok will be a natural fit for you in Wildstar. The final option for the Exiles, the Mordash, will be the race of choice for the undead lovers out there. Their ghoulish features are kept together by metallic frames and gruesome life support devices. They have a bit of night elven feel to them, with elongated ears and lithe dark body frames, but their permanent feature is the decay of the contagion disease, ever threatening to end their lives. So if you dig the alchemist feel and sci-fi tubes protruding from your character's face, and the ghoulish greens and dark blues are the skin colors of your choice, then pick more dash and don't look back. On to the unique races of the Dominion. First off we have the Draken. With their horned heads and clawed hands, the obvious parallel would be dragons. But that isn't the complete picture. You can have them sport the horns of a ram, the eyes of a wolf, or the frills of a lizard. The thing that they all share in common is their muscular, powerful tail, much more pronounced than those of the Orin and the Chua. So if tails on characters bother you, you should probably steer clear. To me, they seem like the race of choice for fans of Trolls and Worgen in World of Warcraft or the Char in Guild Wars 2. And if Feral, Beastly and Bloodthirsty are all adjectives you would attach to your character of choice, then head for the Draken. The Chua are the only race that doesn't have a male and female option, but with the way they look, you probably can't make the distinction anyway. Being the three-way love child of a hamster, a chipmunk and a Pokemon, and especially considering their backstory, the Chua will be the natural fit for fans of gnomes and especially goblins from WoW, the Popori of Terra or even the Asura from Guild Wars. Like the Orin for the Exiles, the Chua feel the cute archetype for the Dominion faction, but they aren't all fun and games, and you can definitely look like you've been in a few fights. 
so if you don't mind abandoning the humanoid shape almost completely, go for the mean furball that is the Chua. And finally we have the Makari. They are by far the most sci-fi of the 8 races in Wildstar. Their slender, metallic frames tower over all the other Dominion races and are only rivaled by the Granok in sheer height. They can hardly be compared to many popular fantasy races, but to simplify things, if Protoss meets Daft Punk sound good to you, you should probably look into the Makari. The only race that comes close to those traits are the Mordesh, but the Makari substitute diseased flesh for glowing visors and breathing masks for sleek servos. So if you wanna lean into the sci-fi angle of Wildstar, pick the Makari. I'll briefly go over the customization options. Each race has between 6 and 9 facial styles to choose from, with a whooping 23 sliders for additional customization, 4 sliders for the chin, 7 sliders for the eyes, 4 sliders for the eyebrows, 3 sliders for the mouth, and 5 sliders for the nose. I must note that the sliders have a varying degree of influence depending on the race and face you've picked, being very visible with the humanoid races but sometimes unnoticeable on something like a Makari face. You have 9 body types at your disposal, though most of them are small variations of the thin, athletic and heavy trinity. You have between 7 and 10 skin colors to choose from, of course some of them are unique to the flavor of the race, the crystal reds of the Granok, the ghastly greens of the Mordesh and the neons of the Makari. The hairstyle options are excellent, with an absolute minimum of 9 hairstyles for the Draken female, but usually between 12 and 14 for all the other races. All of the non-human races have their distinct flavor options, like the ears of the Orin, the horns of the Draken, or the crystals of the Granok. And most ladies, with the exception of the Mordesh and the Makari, have options for jewelry. Overall, I feel that Wildstar offers excellent customization options and the thing that you have to get over and that you can fall in love with, given the chance, is the art style. Other than that, with the vast amount of options and the wide range of character archetypes, you should be able to create just the character that you wanted to play. Now, I'll jump in game and get started with more impressions and guide videos, so if you enjoyed what you saw, I would appreciate your subscription and please expect more Wildstar content in the coming weeks. That's all from me and I'll see you guys next time.